So uh, let me clarify my point. Well, first of all, uh, uh, with the use of the metric tensor and its inverse tensor, I can also lower and higher the indices of any tensor. For example, if I have a tensor like this, mu, nu, say alpha, beta, uh, then I can higher the index of alpha like this and define corresponding tensor with the corresponding number of indices like this. And uh, here I stress that the order of indices is important. That's the first thing. So now uh, I'm ready to explain why tensors are important. For example, if I have such a quantity, say like this, T mu alpha nu gamma, and uh, I multiply it by another tensor, S, say carrying indices alpha nu gamma, this quantity should transform also as a tensor because it carries one index, tensor index, so it should transform as a vector, and it does transform as a vector under the conditions that these guys transform appropriately because transformation of every such index is compensated by a transformation of every such index, and the same is true for this. So the only index which remains is this. As a result, this quantity is transformed as a vector. So uh, manipulations with tensors are self-consistent and have obvious properties under the coordinate transformations. And that's we, what we are seeking for. So, and also it is obvious that a, that a scalar product of two vectors, scalar product of two vectors, is, is invariant under the coordinate transformations. Like this. That is this quantity. And one can write it like this. Uh, sorry, this is all the same. This is uh, different ways of writing of the same quantity. So tensors are the tool to use to uh, write equations in uh, special and general theory of relativity. So metric is of course is a tensor because as we discussed during the previous lecture, uh, for the metric, we have the following situation, that interval in one coordinate system looks like this. And if we transform it to the other coordinate system, to the other coordinate system, then it does look like this. Uh, G bar of beta of x bar d x bar alpha dx bar beta. Because of this equality then, that after coordinate transformation interval doesn't change, we have the following law of transformation for the metric that g mu nu of x is equal to g bar alpha beta x bar dx bar alpha dx mu dx bar beta dx nu. And this transformation law we have been using during the previous lecture at the very beginning. So, metric is just a concrete example of a tensor. So, but then, after all these definitions, we encounter the following problem, that di differentials, differentials, uh, are not transforming appropriately. Suppose, uh, suppose we consider a differential of a tensor. I mean, suppose we consider a difference of a mu at the point x plus dx and subtract from it a mu of x. To linear order in dx, this is equal to d nu a mu of x d x nu. 
dx nu. And now I'm going to show that despite the fact that this quantity carries two indices, carries two indices, so nu and mu, but it doesn't transform appropriately as a two tensor. Now I'm going to show that. I'm going to show that this quantity, this quantity, d nu, a mu, dx nu, which is just uh, to linear order by definition is the difference of these two vectors is not a tensor with two indices, despite the fact that it carries two indices. Well, by the way, I, I'm going to use several different notations for the uh, ordinary differential, namely d a mu d x nu is the same as d nu a mu and the same as a mu comma nu comma nu. So why this quantity doesn't transform appropriately? Consider this thing. Consider a bar alpha comma beta function of x bar. Well, this is d over dx bar beta <coughs> d uh, of a bar alpha by definition, by definition. But this guy, let us express this guy through the unbarred quantity. Well, this is a function of x bar. Through the unbarred quantity. So this becomes d over dx bar, d x bar alpha over dx mu, a mu of x. So this I just used the expression for, uh, for the transformed form of this tensor. And now I have to understand that uh, x, x is a function of x bar. A mu is a complicated function of x bar. It's a function of x, which is in its own right is a function of x bar. So now I use Leibniz rule to differentiate this. First, I differentiate this quantity with x bar. But this is the same as differentiating a compli complicated function. Means that I first take derivative, take, well, let me write it and then explain. So x, first I write this dx alpha dx mu, and then I differentiate. So what I do here, I explain in a second. A mu comma nu x plus, before writing the remaining quantity, let me just stress what I did here. So I applied this differential to this function. So I differentiated it, this guy, with respect to x nu uh, here it's written, and then differentiated x nu as a function of x bar with respect to x bar. So, if we would have had only this term, this term, then this quantity would transform as a tensor. But the problem is that we also have to apply the differential, this differential to this guy, and that is a problem, in fact, because we, what we get is the following thing. So we differentiate this guy with respect to twice x bar alpha dx mu dx nu and then so we uh, assume that this is a function of x unbarred and then we differentiate bar uh, unbarred x nu with respect to the bar beta so i mean we assume that this differential th this derivative here is a function of x unbarred x times a mu of x. Be exactly because of this term, this quantity with the 
uh, simple standard differential doesn't transform as a tensor. Notice that if we would have had only linear transformations, linear coordinate transformations, this term would be absent, and this quantity would be a tensor quantity. That's the situation we encounter in special relativity in flat space time. But in curved space times, and for generic coordinate transformations, this guy doesn't vanish. As a result, this quantity doesn't transform as a tensor. And that complicates things. So, my goal here is to define covariant differential, which does transform as a uh, appropriate tensor quantity. So let me define it. So the problem with this thing, with this thing, that we subtract a vector at the point, at this point, from the vector at this point. To make appropriate quantity, we have to parallel transport this quantity to the point x plus dx. How it is done, I am, I am going to explain right now. So now, the covariant derivative of a mu is the following thing. It's a difference between this quantity and the following thing. A mu of x plus delta a mu of x. And this guy is exactly the result of the parallel transport of this quantity to the point x plus dx. Who is this guy and what it means, parallel transport, I will explain a bit later. But at this moment, I'm going to define this quantity this quantity. So, uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to explain this, uh, the meaning of parallel transport, on some simple example, but at this moment, let me just specify it. So, I have a point x, I have a nearby point x plus dx, I have some vector field here, so I have like, say, four vector a mu at this point, and I have a four vector a mu at this point. So this is a x plus dx, and this is a of x. So this guy doesn't coincide with the parallel transport of this quantity. It's some value of this field at this point. But then I parallel transport according to some rule how parallel transport is done. I parallel transport this quantity here, and I obtain something, some different vector, which is a plus delta a at this. And then I subtract from this, this, and that's how I get this quantity. So, uh, what is this thing? What is this thing? Uh, it is as follows. It is as follows. First of all, I assume that this interval is very short. So the dx is very small, despite the fact that I draw it big, it's very short. So this delta a should be, delta a should be a result of some transformation. So there is some matrix M, which does some transformation on our vector a at this point. So who is this matrix? So it's some rotation of this vector. The result, this result is, is one plus, so unit matrix plus this short rotation given by this M. So who is this guy? For small dx, it should be uh, proportional to dx. So I define it, this is just a definition, with a minus sign, with some quantity, gamma mu, nu alpha, of x dx alpha a nu of x. So this quantity is referred to as a connection, connection for the parallel transport. 
and I'm going to explain its geometric meaning in a second.